As you can see, I'm reading the Boston Globe, the article that Bubby was in, and in that article we gave a sneak behind the scenes peek at the next episode. And in this case, this is gonna be that episode, Pepper's Steak. Take it away, Bubby! When I need some good kosher food, there's only three words I need to know. Feed. Me. Bubby. favorites, pepper steak. And it isn't a Jewish traditional recipe, but you know, we live all over the world, and so as a result, we incorporate a lot of different recipes. And my children loved it, and it's one of our favorites in the family. And, it, and it, sometimes you have, you know, after so many meals, things get dull, you don't know what to make. Try pepper steak. I think that everyone in your family will enjoy it, and it's easy the way I make it, I think. And what it consists of is, um, generally the kosher butcher, you, they come in packages. And the, it's called pepper steak, P-E-P-P-E-R, -P 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 and they're long strips of meat. If you can't get them, ask your butcher to take shoulder steak and cut them in about a half inch strips. And you'll need about a pound or a pound and a half for this recipe. Uh, you can also use chuck steak. The only problem with chuck steak is it'll be a little bit more fatter. And that's, that is the main ingredient. The other ingredients is ketchup. And why ketchup? I don't have to use tomato sauce or tomato paste or sugar or this or that. Ketchup contains everything and the majority of the people like ketchup. So that's another easy part of it. And the second thing that I like is peppers. And peppers, now they come in all colors. So instead of just green, mix and match whatever's on the special when you go grocery shopping. And onions, that also is a very good as staple. A little pepper, a bouillon cube, soy sauce, and fresh mushrooms. Oh, by the way, one very important thing. You know, like they said, we have to watch our sodium. And of course, Everything contains the salt. So try and get some items with low sodium. The ketchup, the soy sauce, the beef bouillon cube, low sodium, so that you'll cut down on the salt. And now I think I'm ready to begin to show you how I make my pepper steak. I have everything prepared and measured, and now let's begin. Let me show you how I prepare my onions and peppers for my recipe. One large onion cut in thick slices. And now I'm going to separate them into rings. And now that I've cut one large onion into rings, I have to cut the peppers. Wash the peppers and then I prepare them. And uh, this is, I cut the tops off. I found it's easier when I cut the tops off first. And then remove the inside. You don't want the seeds. Cut the pepper in half. This one has a lot of seeds in it. And then cut it in slices, thin slices. I have a dull knife, sorry. I didn't think of sharpening before I started. You don't have to be fancy because it'll all dissolve and make it attractive looking. And I like to use different colored peppers. So it doesn't really have to be exact but you don't want them in small pieces. This is my red onion. Oh, I mean my red pepper is all done and now I'm gonna start on the green pepper and cut it the same way. Cut off your 
chalk. Take out the inside. And just the same like you did to the red pepper. Get all this all this out, cut in half. I find it's easier to turn the pepper over and cut it slices. It goes much faster and easier. And don't be fancy, it'll all taste delicious. Pepper steak can either be made in a um, Dutch oven or a large frying pan. I, I like the large frying pan because it's easier to see what's going on. I heat up my frying pan on medium, and then when it's hot, add the oil, and then add the meat. And the meat should lose its color. So leave it there, stir it a while. It takes maybe a couple of minutes until it loses its color. It also seals in the flavor. Hey, Bobby, guess what? Are you talking about Maison? Well, at, well, yeah, well, Maison, we did raise $100, so you're what right about that, but actually something, something else, something different. Oh, what, what, what's different? Time for Ask Bobby. Oh, okay. Okay, Bubby, our first Ask Bubby comes from Facebook, from our facebook.com slash Femi Bubby uh, site. Oh, how wonderful. It's Catherine asking Bubby, are you doing a book? Or did I misunderstand when I was trying to use the Twitter on your website? Well, I guess it's get out of the room it has it. I am working on a book. I, I, I could probably be held responsible for letting that information out. We put it on the website. I, yes, I was trying to do it quietly. And, but, Avram, you let the cat out the bag, then you finish. Well, the thing is, is that the fans have been so vocal. And to go in to do this book privately, I felt like it, it just didn't work. And I talked to Bubby, and, and we both agreed that we want our audience to be a part of this whole book. Don't you think, Bobby? Yes, I think it'll make it more fun and interesting. So as we and do, you're going to help me. As we do the process, we're going to be going and trying to Twitter out what's going on, but we also want to hear from you what you feel about the book, what you want to see. Maybe you might have some great idea that makes it into the book. Who knows? You never know. So we've created a special hashtag. If you're familiar with Twitter, hashtags is how conversations take place. So we've created the hashtag of Bubby Book. If you need more help with that, you can always email us, feedme at chalutzproductions.com, and we'll be happy to try to explain everything and make you part of the process. Yes, join us. We like to share with company. So let's go to our next question, which also comes from Facebook. You have another question? I have another question. It's from Gord. Okay. And it asks if you can post a picture with you and Zadie from your wedding day. Wow. You know, I was beautiful and Zadie was tall, dark, and handsome. And I have a beautiful wedding picture. You have a picture to show us. Absolutely. I'm very proud of it. Okay, let's see. How do you like that? Don't you think we'd make a handsome couple? <laughs> That's great. If you would like to ask Bubby, email us, feedme at chalutzproductions.com. And now it's time for the Yiddish word of the day. Bubby, what's today's Yiddish word? Well, you know, I'm just trying to think of a word that everyone would remember and maybe benefit by it as well. Hmm. What did I teach my children when they were growing up? And then I remembered when my children started to become young adults, you know, they were very ambitious and big ideas, but they didn't think that, you know, there were two sides to everything, a low and a high. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get one word, like a stop sign every so often. So I picked on the word Sue. T-Z-O-O, -O, which is in Yiddish is Sue, and in English it's two, T-O-O. -O. And it worked like a, like a stop sign. You know when you have the cars, you have the red light, and you have amber, and you have green as go. Well, this is like Wait, amber. Bubby, Bubby, like, Bubby, I have what, to what, stop what, you. What's the matter now? You don't like my words. Wait, well, what, amber? Yeah, the, the middle color, it's between 
an orange and a yellow. You know, the amber in the middle of the traffic lights? Huh? What color are the traffic lights? There's the red, yeah. the yellow, and the green. It's not yellow, it's amber. It's like between an orange and a yellow. Okay, okay, so... Sorry, but that, that, in my day it was called amber. It was called amber? Yes. And today it's called yellow? Okay, you have it your way. I have to keep up with the new generation, so it's yellow. Anyway, continue. Anyway, to make a long story short, by using the word so and, and remembering it, it helped them a lot. If they thought of an idea, they said, oh God, that sounds wonderful. But in the meantime, they remembered that Bobby or Mom said so, and so they think the other way, well, hey, it's so wonderful, but what's the bad part of it? Or vice versa. And so I thought today would be a perfect word, and I've taught my grandchildren. Don't go too high and don't go too low. T-O-O, -O, but if I said T-O-O, -O, that's an English word. It wouldn't make an impression. But if I use the word so, T-Z-O-O, -O, that'll stick in their mind. And I hope it'll help all the viewers, too. When you're thinking of something, remember the word so. It's like caution. Slow up, think about it. And good luck. And hope everything works out well. So, as far as the viewers viewers are concerned, actually, is it okay if I mention something to the viewers? Good, it's go ahead. Cool. It's your turn. Go ahead. All right. If they call 646-402-5231, it gets the Feed Me Bubby hotline where they can leave a message. And we actually listen to those messages. And if it's a message that fits within the show, we'll put it at the end of the credits, oh, at the I, end of the show. Oh, I, I have to tell you. Did I tell you the one I got at 7 o'clock in the morning? No, tell me about this. Remember last year you called me up seven th in the, early in the morning? Right. Bobby, I got an SOS. I, I, what do you mean SOS? I got a call. This lady is having a party tonight with friends, and she wanted to know some information on a recipe I had. Right, I remember this. You remember? Now I do. That's nothing. A couple of months ago I went to the doctors. All of a sudden... The cell phone rings. Uh, Bobby, this is Avram. I said, Avram, well, what's going on? What's the matter? Everything all right? I got an SOS. You have to answer it right now. It's before your turf, before the holiday, and this lady wants to make something. She has to know now she's caught in the middle. So we do what we call SOS calls. We'll it's, accept them. It's, it's, it's literally a Bubby 911. If you, if you do have an SOS, make sure that you give your email address out and you yes. spell how to do yeah, the how email to address. Back. That is the easiest way for us to, yeah, to get you know, getting several, back to you. Several people called and they asked us the question, but they didn't give us a return phone. Uh, a, a email, email address. Email address. And I really felt bad. They must think that, well, wow, she never answered. I certainly would have answered, but we, we had no way of getting contact. Plus, we're overwhelmed with a lot of people, oh, especially yes. with, with now, now that you're on JLTV Mondays at the 8 o'clock. You're part of the, the cooking <laughs> segment that they have on Mondays. Well, 24 hours isn't enough. I have to sleep, too. Well, we try our best to answer emails. The only thing I can say, if it gets too long, send another email. We'll do our best. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Kosher Dills, and I'm hanging out here with Feed Me Bubby. So you know when you got something in your tummy, and your mama said blow your nose because your nose is running and you ain't got no money, but you're probably going to say, Mom, feed me Bubby. Kosher Dills gets hungry, and he knows that Sapka and Saba love me. Dot com. Before that, feed me, Bubby. F E E D M D B U B B E D C O M. Ahem, ahem. Feed me, Bubby. I am hungry. After several minutes, your meat changes color, and. I place it in a dish, get all the meat out of the pan, and then I'm going to prepare the sauce. It goes with it. 
And now I'm ready for my sauce. And first I add the flour and give it a little stir because you don't want it to get lumpy. Add my soy sauce. All the ingredients actually. Pepper and the beef bouillon cube. The ketchup. And the water. Give it a good stir. And stir it for a little while because you want the flour and the cube bouillon to dissolve and get a little smooth. And if, if need be, make it on medium high just to give it a little style, a, a boost. And now you see that the sauce is starting to boil. And place all the meat back. You have to keep an eye on the bouillon cube. Put the cover on. Leave it on medium, low medium, for about a half an hour. But during the half an hour, take the spoon and give it a stir and make sure that the bouillon cube has dissolved. And after half an hour, we'll add the other ingredients because you want the peppers and the mushrooms to be a little bit more crispy. It takes a little extra time to watch doing it, but it, it isn't that long. It's a short, easy recipe. I took the cover off. And I think that my bouillon cube should almost be, oh yeah, it's almost mashed. Give it a stir so that it'll mix in with everything. And I'm ready to add my mushrooms. And my peppers. Give it a good stir. You have to play with it a little. Bring it to medium high so that it'll start a boil again. And then once it starts to the boil, bring it down to simmer and let it cook for a good half hour or longer. You take a fork and test the meat to see if the meat is good. Put the cover back on. Well, first we'll leave it for a good half hour. Start on medium high for the boil. Then bring it back to low medium and patiently wait. And now I think my pepper steak is all done and I'm going to check it. Let, let me show you what I do. Oh, it looks beautiful. Look at the colors. That's why I like to have different colored peppers in it. See how it looks? But, you know, sometimes you need the meat so I always like to check the meat with a fork, make sure it's tender enough. Yeah, feels good. I think I, we're all ready to plate it. But it, it gives you a good appetite and it smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna get a tape plated and I like to use brown rice because it's healthier. But white rice is just as good. Serve it with my, as a main meal and a vegetable and, and a fresh fruit for dessert. What can you say? It's delicious, it's easy, it's good for company, it's good for the family. And this is my peppered steak over the rice. And I like to serve it family style. And this way the sauce gets into the rice and tastes good. Serve it with whatever vegetable you like, a salad, and also fresh fruit for dessert. I hope that you'll try it. Don't forget, let us hear from you. Thank you.
words, mm. just important as I love uh-huh. you. It's all kosher. Bubby, yeah. bubby. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. If I want something tasty to put in my dish, yeah. gonna whip up some homemade Come filter fish, fish or a sweet canish. I cannot choose. I got so much to eat, I, I can't stay in schmooze. So don't forget to say please, thank you, and oi. Cause Bubby raised me to be a nice Jewish boy. When I need somebody to nourish and love me, I pick up the phone and say, Feed me, Bubby. When I feel lonely and miss my mom, I call up my good friend Avaron. He says, Meet me for shoppers, but now I got a shop. So if you feel feeling kinda lonely, I know just where you should go. He's a real cool man, she's a real cool sister. Bubby, the 614th miss. If I need somebody to nourish and love me, I pick up the phone and say, Feed, Feed me, me, Bubby. Bubby. May not be Jewish and think you don't get this, but the love runs, runs thicker than man and shepherds. Bubby's treats are good for everyone. Joe, Joe the, the plumber, plumber, or the rabbi's rabbi son. Yeah, turkey, egg rolls. Salmon and brisket. If I need somebody to feed and love me, www.feedmebubby. How can you go wrong? Three words. Kosher for Passover brown. As important as I love you. Sweet and it's sour kosher. turkey drumsticks. It's all kosher. We want to thank beef, you, Bubby Bubby. Fresh yeah. fruit and salad. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Cheese blitzes. Yeah. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Blueberry.com.